the hazard communication standard and its cousin, the laboratory standard, are commonly referred to as right to know laws. These laws provide the foundation for awareness of chemical safety in the workplace, including your schools and laboratories. Most of you are very familiar with the provisions of these regulations, especially how the chemical hazard information is communicated on labels and material safety data sheets, or MSDS. In the almost 30 years since their implementation, these laws helped usher in a culture of chemical safety for teachers, students, administrators, and indeed the entire community. In March 2012, OSHA published the first major revision to the hazard communication standard since its inception. In announcing the revision to incorporate what is known as GHS, OSHA stated that its goal was to transform the right to know into the right to understand chemical hazards. GHS stands for the Globally Harmonized System of Classification and Labeling of Chemicals. GHS is not a new regulation or standard. It is a document that establishes objective criteria for classifying and identifying chemical hazards. The overarching goal is to ensure the safe use of chemicals by providing practical, reliable, consistent, and comprehensible information on their hazards. Misunderstandings and misconceptions concerning chemical toxicity provide a good example for the decision to implement GHS. The word chemical is often preceded by toxic. This can be confusing or even scary and it really doesn't help you understand either the properties of the chemical or how to use it safely. The confusion arises at least in part due to conflicting criteria for what is toxic. Various regulatory and advisory organizations, ANSI, the NFPA, EPA, OSHA, and DOT, the alphabet soup of organizations, employ a range of values from 50 to 5,000 milligram per kg to determine if a substance is harmful based on its acute toxicity or its LD50 value. GHS provides a set of clear, quantitative, objective criteria to classify the relative hazard based on its LD50 value. Thus, instead of toxic, GHS might say fatal if swallowed, toxic if swallowed, harmful if swallowed, or may be harmful if swallowed. You get differentiation with GHS, and that helps to improve clarity, understanding, and ultimately, safety. Passage of the GHS provisions in March 2012 started a three-year clock for employers and chemical manufacturers to comply with the new requirements. The first deadline under the law is December 2013. By this date, schools and school districts must provide training for teachers and staff to understand how to read GHS labels and also the new safety data sheets. The M in MSDS has been dropped. Chemical manufacturers and distributors have until 2015 to reclassify chemicals and produce GHS formatted labels and SDS for all new products. What this means is that training comes before implementation. The purpose of this safety video is to provide the training that you need. Flynn Scientific will work with you every step of the way for the next three years to provide the information and the training needed to meet the GHS requirements and most importantly, improve chemical safety in your school. GHS depends on a foundation or a collection of building blocks to achieve the goals of effective hazard communication. Classification of chemicals is the starting point. 
GHS establishes 16 physical hazard categories and 10 health hazard categories for chemicals. Within most categories, GHS further distinguishes multiple hazard levels or ranks, with one being most severe. Communicating the hazards is accomplished by means of the labels and SDS. And there are four main GHS building blocks for this purpose. Those building blocks include, first of all, pictograms. These are graphics or symbols, followed by signal words, which quickly identify the main hazards, as well as text-based hazard statements and precautionary statements to further describe each hazard and the recommended preventive measures. We all know that a picture is worth a thousand words, so let's begin our GHS training with the pictograms. These are standard symbols enclosed within a red diamond border, and there are eight different ones for the physical and health hazards of chemicals. The choice of whether a pictogram will appear on a label depends on the objective criteria that we alluded to earlier. Thus, we talked about toxic chemicals. A skull and bones pictogram is used for acutely toxic chemicals, those with oral LD50 values less than or equal to 300 milligrams per kg. For chemicals having oral LD50 values in the range from 300 to 2,000 milligrams per kg, a pictogram with an exclamation point is used. Different signal words and hazard statements will be associated with these pictograms on the labels and on the SDS to further distinguish the hazard level or the rank within that hazard category. Here are the pictograms, what they stand for, and an example for each. An exploding bomb pictogram is used for explosives or self-reactive substances. You should not have any chemicals requiring this pictogram on your school science shelves. A flame pictogram is used for flammable or pyrophoric materials or those that will generate a flammable gas upon reaction with water, for instance. Examples of flammable materials requiring this pictogram are any of the alcohols, ethyl and methyl isopropyl alcohol, etc., acetone, and also sodium and potassium metal. The third pictogram has an O underneath that flame that stands for an oxidizer. An oxidizer is anything that adds oxygen to a flame. Familiar oxidizers are, of course, ammonium nitrate, potassium iodate. The fourth pictogram is a gas cylinder, and this is self-explanatory for gases that are under pressure. An example, hydrogen, oxygen, and so on. The corrosion pictogram is used for both physical and health hazards. It's used for anything that is corrosive to metals or, more importantly perhaps, that will cause skin corrosion, skin burns, and permanent eye damage. An example of a chemical that requires the corrosion pictogram, hydrochloric acid, acetic acid, ammonium hydroxide, and so on. A skull and crossbones pictogram is used for those substances that are acutely toxic, that is, fatal or toxic if swallowed. An example would be phosphoric acid. The exclamation point pictogram is used for any substance that would be classified as an irritant, either a skin and eye irritant or a respiratory tract irritant. It's also used for skin sensitizers, allergens, and those that have toxicity values classified as harmful if swallowed. An example of a chemical requiring the exclamation point is iron 3 nitrate. Finally, the health hazard pictogram is used for any substance that would be classified as either a known or a possible or a probable carcinogen, things that have mutagenic properties, are reproductive hazards, or have specific target organ toxicity. Examples of chemicals with the health hazard pictogram, all chromium-6 compounds are known carcinogens, lead compounds, methylene chloride. The next time you prepare for lab, take a moment to look at the label on the bottle for any chemical you will be using. 
potassium iodate. It's an oxidizer. When you look at that, see if you can identify the GHS pictogram that will be used in the future to communicate the hazard information for this chemical. The chemical label is an important and often overlooked safety aid. To prevent possible accidents, always take the time to read the name of the chemical on the bottle and review the safety information before using any chemical. GHS provides a set of objective criteria for classifying the hazards of chemicals. To remove ambiguity about the degree of risk inherent in using a chemical, GHS further specifies standard symbols and language elements to convey the hazard information. All chemical labels will be required to include, as we described earlier, pictograms, a signal word, as well as specific hazard and precautionary statements. These all work together. The pictograms, signal words, and hazard statements will help you quickly identify and describe the nature of the hazard. Precautionary statements provide further guidance to prevent accidents and avoid exposure to chemicals. There are only two possible signal words, either danger or warning, and these words are used to heighten awareness of the relative risk when using certain chemicals. Of the two words, danger is the more severe warning. Depending on their hazard rankings, not all chemicals will have either a pictogram or a signal word. Pictograms and signal words convey the general physical and health hazards of chemicals. Hazard and precautionary statements are more specific and they're used to promote further understanding. GHS has written 82 specific unique hazard statements and more than 300 precautionary statements in their labeling requirements. To illustrate how the hazard and precautionary statements work together to protect you when you're using a chemical, consider the following label elements for a flammable liquid, such as ethyl alcohol. With a flash point of 14 degrees Celsius, ethyl alcohol is classified as a Category 2 flammable liquid. The assigned hazard statement is highly flammable liquid and vapor. There are five associated precautionary statements relating to the safe use of this chemical and the appropriate response measures in the event of exposure or fire. Keep away from heat, sparks, and open flames. Keep container tightly closed. Wash protective gloves and clothing after handling. If on skin or hair, immediately remove all contaminated clothing and rinse skin with water. In case of fire, use class ABC fire extinguisher for extinction. A well-written and designed chemical label will reduce accidents and may even save lives. For more than 35 years, you have counted on Flint Scientific labels to help you safely store, handle, and use laboratory chemicals. We are excited about the opportunity to further improve chemical safety by adding the right to understand GHS label elements while preserving the indispensable Flynn storage, disposal, shelf life, and hazard alert advice. Let's take a look at ethyl ether as an example for the GHS requirements. The first requirement is a product identifier, and this category remains unchanged. Flint Scientific has always had the chemical name, the formula weight, and the chemical formula on our labels. Ethyl ether has hazard statements based on its physical properties and its toxicology. With a flash point of minus 45 degrees Celsius and a boiling point less than 35 degrees C, it qualifies as a flammable liquid hazard category 1. These physical properties correspond with the hazard statement extremely flammable liquid and vapor. Ethyl ether also has health hazards based on its LD50 value and also its LC50, which is the inhalation hazard. 
Those health hazard statements include harmful if swallowed, causes mild skin irritation, causes serious eye irritation, may be harmful if inhaled, and may cause drowsiness or dizziness. The precautionary statements associated with these hazard statements include keep away from heat, sparks, and open flame, and the various first aid statements, if swallowed, rinse mouth, contact poison control center or a physician if you feel unwell, if on skin, flush affected area with water, if inhaled, remove to fresh air and keep at rest, if in eyes, rinse cautiously with water, remove contact lenses if present, and continue rinsing. The signal word for ethyl ether is danger. Remember, the signal word is determined based on the specific hazard category or ranking. In the case of ethyl ether, extremely flammable liquid and vapor, the signal word is danger. Ethyl ether has two pictograms on the GHS label. The flame pictogram because it is a, an extremely flammable liquid and the exclamation point pictogram due to its toxicity. You'll notice that we have included space on our GHS template for three pictogram diamonds. If only one or two apply based on the specific hazards, then instead of leaving the remaining diamonds blank, we have used the words, no GHS label. As I talked about earlier, we have preserved the indispensable Flynn Scientific storage, disposal, handling and use advice that you have always seen on our labels. The storage code for the Flynn chemical compatible family for diethyl ether, it's organic number four in a dedicated flammables cabinet. Solubility, shelf life, disposal, and the CAS number are all valuable pieces of information to help you use this substance safely. Finally, I'd like to call your attention to the center of the label where we have maintained our hazard alert. This summarizes the main point that you need to understand about this chemical in order to protect yourself and your students while using the chemical. The most common questions we get from teachers concern legacy chemicals in their stock rooms and repackaged chemicals or solutions that they prepare for use in the lab. OSHA has not issued formal guidance on either of these questions. The current understanding is that as long as the original label remains on the container, these labels are in essence grandfathered in and you do not need to replace them with GHS compliant labels. GHS is an update of the existing standard. What that means is that existing recommendations concerning what's required on a label remain in place. So what do you need if you prepare a solution? The name of the chemical, the concentration if it's appropriate, the date it was prepared, and a brief description of the physical and the health hazards. You still have a responsibility to convey the hazards of the chemicals to any employee who is working with that chemical. Finally, we've talked a lot about labels, but not really about SDSs or the safety data sheets. The good news is that once all of this classification is done and all of the new GHS label elements or building blocks have been defined, all of that information will simply migrate over to the SDS. Now, OSHA has required a new 16 section format for the SDSs. The good news, Flynn Scientific has been using that 16 section format for more than 20 years now. So that's not going to change. What will happen is we'll simply put all of that information that we're putting on the label into the SDS. So you'll see the pictogram, the signal words, the hazard statements, and the precautionary statements. Remember, the point of all of this is for your protection. It will only protect you if you use it. Read the label before using a chemical and always review the material safety data sheet or the new safety data sheet for essential storage, handling, and disposal information on any chemical. 
This video fulfills the OSHA training requirements for HASCOM 2012 and GHS. Remember that OSHA has set a December 2013 deadline for all employers, including schools, to provide training to ensure that teachers and staff understand how to read GHS labels. Just as you employ a range of differentiated instruction in your classroom to help your students achieve learning objectives, we encourage you to do the same to meet your safety training goals. Effective safety training is comprehensive, ongoing, and scaffolded. The free Flint Scientific Laboratory Safety Course is available online for all teachers. Please take advantage of this opportunity now to become Flynn Safety Certified. We guarantee you and your students will benefit. Information and training from Flint Scientific will help you build confidence, become proficient, and stay safe. We appreciate very much your support and look forward to continuing to serve you.